If you want it's Emily Fox, today's video is going to be a group review of best-selling mascaras at Sephora. So basically, I looked at their top like 15 mascaras and I decided to get a few and then I included a few that I've tried and I already have opinions on. And I will be doing, as always, I'm going to play this down below too, uh, close-ups and you're going to see what the mascaras look like on my lashes because I feel like it's so much more useful than me just telling you what they do if you can actually see it. So. One by one. Let's go through them because there are some very terrible ones, at least in my opinion. And then there are some meh, I don't think they're necessarily worth the money. And then the ones that I think they're actually worth spending more money on. Because I feel like I'm a very much of a uh, drugstore mascara type of person. I feel like very rarely I will feel like, you know what, this one is definitely worth spending, you know, five times the price of a drugstore mascara and only keeping it for like three, six months. Some of them are definitely worth it, but some of them just... Nah. Let me go in order of the ones that I'm seeing right now on the Sephora website when I go for the best-selling mascara section. So the Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara. I have tried this mascara so many times because I've been wanting to like it and I feel like it looks nice on my lashes. I, it has an hourglass shape and I feel like I do struggle to get the middle part of my lashes because of it. I feel like it just doesn't do it. But it does give me a nice curl, uh, some nice volume, a bit of length and everything. But my issue is that it flakes like no other. Like it's crazy the amount that it just gets all over my face. And for some reason, for some of the people, it doesn't do that. But on me, it's just not worth the effort. Definitely not worth spending more money on it. And I have tried the waterproof version, which I don't think is in here, but still mentioning it, the waterproof version smudges on me, so I just don't think uh, that one is worth the money. It's not better than sex for me. In second position, it seems to be this one by Benefit. This is the Dear Real Mascara, and I hadn't tried it in years until I prepared for this video and I tried it again, and I remembered correctly, <laughs> this brush hurts. It just does. Uh, it's very, very pointy and dangerous, and I don't know if my eyes are sensitive, but every single time I will stab myself with it. You're gonna see in the close-up that it does give me some length, some volume, and a bit of curl, but I feel like I have to work with it so much to get to that point. Uh, it definitely is separating. I get obviously the pointy ends do work for that, but the formula is so liquidy that it just takes a while to make it work. It does get better once it dries, but I don't think it's worth the effort slash it is so difficult to remove and I don't feel like it's more waterproof or resistant smudging flaking than the other ones and I just don't think it's worth struggling so much to remove it. I, ha I feel like I have to really scrub my eyes to get it off and I do use uh, waterproof makeup remover so it's definitely not the issue. So uh, if you have tried it, let me know in the comment section if you also struggle to remove it, if it's just me. But yeah, it's a okay mascara, it's just I don't think for me it's worth the possibility of stabbing myself, the effort of removing it and having to like make it work, especially for that price. So it's a meh mascara for me. In third position, we have my precious, precious Benefit Roller Lash Mascara. Ever since this came out, I've had a tube because I love it. And I mean, love it. Uh, the brush has a little bit of a curl to it and it just really helps lift my lashes. My lashes are pretty long, they're definitely straight. And I feel like this just really lifts them up. I don't like curling them, especially for these review videos because I want to be able to show you what the mascara does on its own. And the brush is definitely not as dangerous, but it definitely still separates my lashes. It gives me a nice, like I call it fluttery lashes when it looks really soft curl, some volume, some length. And I really like using this as a second mascara too. So if I use something that might be more volumizing, but it's not separating enough, I'll go back with this one just to lift my lashes and separate them. And it's a very nice everyday mascara which I feel like is worth the money because once again it is more pricey than drugstore mascaras but this one I feel like just works for me and again it came out two three years ago at least and I've had a tube ever since so in fourth position they have put the milk kush mascara which this one was recommended to me so much and my first reaction was this is so freaking heavy and I mean like so heavy uh, you do get a natural bristle brush and it's huge. On me it's a very natural soft looking mascara. It doesn't really curl them. Uh, it does give me, you know, some volume, some length in the sense that it makes my lashes look darker and more defined. Uh, it doesn't make them clumpy considering how big the brush is slash it is kind of messy. I always make a mess when I apply mascara but definitely more when the brushes are this big. Uh, unfortunately for me I don't feel like the effects are dramatic enough to be worth splurging slash I kind of feel bad throwing this when I'm done with it because it's so heavy and I feel like I don't know why, it makes me feel bad. I've seen so many amazing reviews on this, people having super dramatic results, and it just doesn't do that on me. So unfortunately, I really wanted to like this, but it's definitely a meh. I don't think it's worth the money for me. 
In fifth position, we have my precious, precious Monsieur Big Mascara by Lancome. Um, this mascara is also something I've had a tube of ever since they came out with it because it is bomb. Uh, it is also a natural bristle brush and it is also pretty big but it's not as messy on me. This gives me so much volume and also curls my lashes. It also gives me some like you're gonna see in a close-up. It looks really really good. They also have a waterproof version that I do like. You're gonna see that after all of the ones I've been mentioning this one is definitely way more dramatic and I feel like I'm actually wearing mascara. I do think it's worth spending more money when you get a more intense result. It's not clumpy. I don't feel like it makes my lashes look spidery or anything and it's surprisingly not bad at separating my lashes. It definitely gives the illusion of having like a bajillion lashes. When I look at that close-up, I have like my video right there and I'm like, yeah, it looks really, really nice. I definitely think this one is worth it. I actually like combining this one and then applying this one just to extra separate and curl my lashes, but both of these separately are really good, but in combination, they're just bomb. So that one, in my opinion, is definitely worth the money. Once again, I have had a tube ever since it came out, so. In sixth position, they have the Benefit Cosmetic Bad Gal Bang Volumizing Mascara, which I do not have a tube of anymore, but I will include the pictures that I have from whenever I did a review on it. It looks great on the lashes, if you don't mind the more dry, kind of spidery looking uh, lashes, which I don't mind. I feel like it's very intense, very thick. It is definitely on the clumpy side, but if you want really intense results, I do feel like it does give it to you. Unfortunately, it smudge and flakes on me. like a lot, so I don't think it's worth it. I feel like if you're gonna spend a lot of money on mascara, it better not smudge your flake. At least in my opinion, that's how I feel about it. So I feel like the formula is too liquidy and too thick and it makes it so much harder to remove it uh, at night because you applied so much product. So in my opinion, it is not a bad mascara. It's just not uh, really for me. I don't think it's worth uh, having to deal with the smudging. But if you like really intense results, you will enjoy that one. The brush is also a plastic, pretty big uh, bristle brush, and I did like it. Seven position, the Marc Jacobs Velvet Noir Major Volume Mascara, which I'll include the clips because I have a tube. I just don't know where it is right now. But it's also a very big natural bristle brush, and it gives you a very nice everyday look, kind of soft, fluttery lashes, kind of light curl to them, some volume, some natural length to it. But unfortunately, I have found a dupe at the drugstore. I'll link the video down below. So I feel like it's not necessarily worth spending that much more money on it now since I have found something that works just as well for me. But this one, I definitely understand why people like it. I don't think it gives me major volume, but it definitely gives me a nice natural look for every day. Next, we have the Dior Dior Show Mascara. And I got this during the last Sephora sale because everyone seems to love this on the internet. It's like one of their best sellers, obviously. And I tried it, and first off, it has a natural bristle brush. Again, once again, very huge for, for some reason. Big brush seem to be very popular. It is a little messy, but uh, I do like it for some stuff and hate it for other stuff. You're gonna see in a close-up that it does give me some actually really nice length. Uh, it's very natural on the lashes, it's not clumpy, again, that kind of fluttery lash look. If you curl your lashes, you would probably like this. Again, I don't like curling my lashes and I never do for those videos, so I feel like you can't appreciate the lengthening as much as you could if you did curl them. But my big no-no is the fact that it smells so freaking strongly of perfume, and again, I would deal with it if my eyes didn't mind it. Unfortunately, I have like tiny eyes the whole day whenever I'm wearing this because it irritates my eyes. They're not red but they're just not happy. And then whenever I remove it at the end of the day, that's when my eyes just tell me that they're not happy about it. So unfortunately, uh, it doesn't work for me, but I understand why some people that curls the lashes do enjoy this because it's a very nice, natural, long lash look, which is very nice, but again, not worth it for me. Then we have the Tarte Light Camera Lashes Mascara. This one I've heard so many people talk about it for the longest time, and I finally got a chance to try it. And I have to, I don't know if mine was dry, which obviously I bought it just before I did the video, so maybe it's the one I picked or something, but the formula is very, very dry. It is a small brush, finally, and the formula really grabs my lashes, like it really sticks there, and it kind of helps give them a little bit more curl than probably a different formula would. I would say this is a very, very good mascara for daily basis. If you curl your lashes, you will probably adore this because it really gives the illusion that you have like a bajillion lashes. I only wish it gave me a little bit more length, but I still think this is like amazing mascara. It gave me so much volume and it just was separating and it just, I mean, the close-up will speak for itself. Uh, it's just a fantastic mascara and I completely understand the hype. I'm just curious though if the 
mascara formula is supposed to be this dry or if it's just mine let me know because if uh, it's just mine I would definitely splurge and get another one because I was so happy to wear this on a daily basis because it just looks super good like so many lashes some nice volume some nice separation I didn't have to like work with it and make it work the brush was not dangerous I was able to use it very easily and it wasn't super messy either so I also didn't smudge a flake but yeah, overall a really fantastic mascara and I completely understand the hype. Then we have the Urban Decay Perversion Mascara, which I also got at Tube and I lost and I will find it and include a close up. Uh, it has a huge bristle, natural bristle brush and I'm so impressed with the results. I had tried it years ago. I had done a first impression wear test, which I'll link down below if you're curious because it looked freaking amazing on my lashes and I never purchased this because again, high in mascara. And I was so impressed with it because I had went on a hike, it was hot and it didn't smudge on me and it gave me the most length like ever. And again, I got a new tube and same thing, same thing, so much length, a nice soft curl and just a bajillion lashes. It's not clumpy. Usually big brushes tend to be a bit more clumpy. Not this one, just gave me the perfect everything. Honestly, it's just such a good mascara and I can't recommend this enough, I love it. I will not spend years in a row like this not repurchasing it because it is totally worth the money in my opinion. I adore this. I definitely think it needs more rave and I will be there to give it all the love it deserves because look at this. It's just so amazing. Then we have the Hourglass Caution Extreme Lash Mascara and it is a nice everyday mascara for me. I feel like it, you're gonna see in the close up, it definitely grips my lashes. It definitely gives them a light curl to it. And on one eye, it looks better than the other one. I feel like I do have like a better lash eye than the other one. But uh, it, it's nice, but it's not worth spending more money for me. It's also one of those like very weighty mascara. It looks really, really nice packaging wise, but the results are just too natural for me to really feel like I need to splurge for it. Uh, if you like the look, I do recommend it because it doesn't smudge, doesn't flake, and it did last well. It doesn't start going bad very, very fast or something, but I feel like I have found other ones that are more worth it than this one, but it's not bad. I happily use this until it turned bad, you know what I mean? And then last but not least, we have the, is it Hylia? Hylia? Mascara. This is the Limitless Lash Mascara and it is one of the most recent one that I tried and I did use it in a first impression, like full face of first impression video and my review was meh and I still stand behind it, honestly. It's just okay in my opinion. It has a interesting brush. On one side you have very short bristle and on the other side you get a very long one and it's very easy once again to stab yourself in the eye. The formula is very very wet so I feel like it doesn't really accumulate on the lashes. It doesn't really grip to them. So if you like very natural results and you're more uh, into separated look and you don't really care about a lot of volume or length or curl. <laughs> I don't know what's left but you're left with that. Uh, yeah it's too natural for me to think it's actually worth spending I don't know, how much is it? Like 20 something dollars on it? I feel like I can find something for a fraction of the price at the drugstore that will be worth the money more than this. So yeah, for me this is also a meh. I know it's one of those like natural mascaras, which I'm not sure how different the ingredient list is compared to the other ones, but I know there's no fra fragrance, for example, in this one. So uh, if that's a, something that obviously matters for you, then this mascara might be an option for you, but I don't think it was worth the money. So those were my 12 quick reviews on Sephora best-selling mascaras. Let me know in the comment section if you have tried any of these, how you felt about them. Is there any uh, in here that caught your eye that now you think you might need to spend the money on? Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoy these type of reviews. I will, again, put the playlist in the description box. And don't forget to subscribe to not miss any future ones. And I will be actually putting some on the screen that I recommend you check out. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.